Hey everyone, it's Dina. So I had a request for help with designing a calendar where the person could use a photo of a family member and that's what we're going to do today. So what I want to show you is um, how to set up your page, how to use some drawing tools and some other tools in the um, software so that you can create your actual calendar and then fill it with color images or whatever it is that you want to do at that point. So the first thing that I would recommend is going and changing your page setup. You want to change the size from the automatic cameo to letter um, because that's most likely what you're going to be able to print in a home printer unless you have one of those fancy smancy wide format printers that can do like a 12 by 12 which I kind of always wanted one of those. Um, <clears throat> so we have our size as letter and you can leave it on a cutting mat if you want. It's your choice. Benefit of that is you then have a grid that you can reveal to help you with sizing or placement or anything of that nature. Um, it's up to you and if you want to do that or not. What I do recommend doing though is making sure that both of these boxes here are selected for show print border and show cut border. The print border is this gray line cut border is the red line. So you want to make sure that everything that you are designing is within those areas. Um, otherwise, if you printed this and your design is outside of this gray area, even just a tiny bit, you run the risk of, you know, cutting off part of that image. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're designing. On the left hand side, I've used the drawing tools toolbar to draw these rectangles. And um, <clears throat> the line option here, where I changed it from a solid to a dashed line to draw this line here. Now, what I want to do is um, this is the background or the base part of the calendar, the, the piece of paper that's going to hang on the wall or go on the desk or wherever. And this box here is going to be where I put my, my image. And what I want to do is I want to align these so that they are centered or um, center aligned to each other. So I just want to select both of those items so you can see that there's a gray box around this one and this one. That lets me know that both of those items are selected. Now there's a couple of ways that you can do this. You can go to the transform toolbar to go into the transform panel or on the quick access toolbar up at the top you have the same options that are in the panel. So it's wherever your mouse is closest to, whatever is more comfortable for you, but there's multiple ways that you can actually do things in this software. Now, because I want them center aligned, I want to use this option right here. And I had it actually pretty close. It didn't really shift that much. So now I should have equal space around those items. Um, <clears throat> One little tool tip that I want to share with you that I think will make designing a lot easier for you if you're drawing lines or you know something of that nature is um, how to draw a straight line. And what you want to do is if you eyeball it, you know you can see that it can be slightly off, and you might not even realize it um, if you're just drawing that. To draw a straight line from point A to point B, you will click your mouse and hold it, press the shift key on your keyboard, draw your line. You can see how even if I'm moving my mouse, except for it takes it at a straight diagonal, um, just depending on what angle that you're going at there. Find your width or length or whatever Click your mouse button, release, shift, and there you have an exact straight line. Whereas if I move these side by side, you can see one is at a slight angle. So that's the benefit. Okay, shift, click and drag, click when you find your end point, release, shift. Okay, straight lines. Now I'm just going to get rid of those. Um, so that's how I drew this line. I just made sure it was dotted. And this for me is just a visual of where I want to separate those, but you can use those where you may want to add a fold. The cutter will actually cut a perforated line for you so that it makes it easier to fold. Um, I, 
it's simple, but I like that. Um, okay, I did the same thing here for this grid for the days of the week. I drew a box and then I replicated it. So um, those tools are not up here. Okay, so these are just the alignment. What you want to do is go over to this replicate toolbar panel and then open up replicate. And this gives you the option to duplicate left, right, up, down. You can do it in rows or columns of three or four. Um, you can fill the page. That's not what we're doing here, but this would be helpful if you want to fill the page with a single design. You can also mirror this. So if you want one above and below exactly the same or in that mirrored format, then you can do it that way. Um, the, where that would be helpful is if you're designing a card and you want to have the same design on the front and the back. Or maybe you are making a cupcake topper and you want that design, that entire design to be mirrored so that you have a front and a back to place together. That's where mirror will be helpful. Um, what I did is actually used a keyboard shortcut to draw that and then replicate it once I had it selected. So to do that with a keyboard, you're going to hold the control key and then use your arrows to replicate in the direction that you want. So you can see that I drew a little box grid. Now I don't need that one, but you can see how you can use your arrows to replicate in that manner. Getting all kinds of little tips today. All right, um, now I have my background, where my picture is going to go, my little separator line, my days of the week. Um, now I want to build the box for the actual days that have the numbers in them, where I can write things or put little stickers or whatever. Um, so, to make this easy, because I always think, let's work smarter, not harder. How can I do this where I don't have to keep drawing boxes and boxes and boxes, and I'm going to use replicate, okay? Whether you use the panel options or the keyboard options, that's your choice, whatever you're most comfortable with. I prefer keyboard just because my hands are already near there. So I'm going to replicate one row down. Now... I can try to move this down and keep it aligned and in that same format um, because they're all grouped as one, then it'll go easier. But here's another shortcut for you. You can move items with your keyboard shortcuts, hold shift and then press down and you can see how it's moving it down in, you know, like probably five increments, five millimeter increments or whatever. So once you find the placement that you desire, now all you have to think about is how big do you want those squares? And because they're grouped together, we're going to draw them out all at the same time, just like that. Now I can easily replicate this again using the replicate panel or my keyboard. And I want five rows of these, so I've got one, two, three, four, five. So now I have the template for my calendar. Now at this point, if you wanted to save this as a design template, um, you could totally do that. You can save it to your library or your hard drive, okay? Your choice on however you do that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Now comes the designing aspect of colors and photos and clip art or whatever it is that you want to add to this. If you wanted to change your line colors, let's say that I want this dashed line to be blue. Then I can use my quick access toolbar and change that line color. Um, same thing for a fill. Let's say that I wanted this box to have a light tan fill. Then I can fill it from there. But you also have these options over here on the right. So your color palette, your fill panel, and then your line color, which is right up here, line style. Um, <clears throat> so again, just whatever's most comfortable for you, just know that you have more options over here in the panels than you actually do on the quick access toolbar. So I actually use both. And just find what works for you. 
So now um, I want to fill this image right here with, um, or sorry, this square with an image. And I have one of my son and daughter-in-law. And what I'm going to do is just drag it into this selected box. And once you see the picture in that boxed area, just let go of it. And it looks like it's holding on to, so I'm done with replicate, I'm done with transform. I need my colors. Okay, so you have some tools in here that can help you manipulate the images. And that's in the fill pattern area under advanced options. So if you wanted to um, rotate this, if you wanted to scale it, so just keep in mind that um, you know you go down too far, you're going to get a repeating pattern, which may be what you want, but I think in this instance, we want 100. And then if you wanted to rotate it, oops. And then scale it up a little bit. And then if you wanted to move it within there, you can use pan. And kind of get just a little bit better placement. Oops. Um, to undo that, I just did a control Z, but you have this undo option up here on your toolbar as well, which is this left turn arrow. And then go back to pan. A little bit more there we go all right so that's what I like in my placement um, for that now I don't want a fill color in that actually so at this point if I was ready to go in and add numbers if I wanted to change these lines to black then I can do that up here um, one tip if I wanted this to print the grid because I want those black lines on my calendar then I need to make sure that I give them a weight. By default, it's set to zero, and it doesn't really look like it changes anything on your screen, but it actually does in terms of printing to your home printer. So in order to print lines, they either have to have a weight to them, or you have to fill the boxes with a color or an image to be able to get them to print that actual line. And I don't want a line on that. I'm going to change that one to black as well. All right. Now, at this point, um, if I wanted to fill my grid with white color, it's not going to look like it does anything here. But if I make a change to the background color, let's say that I want this light green. So now you can see that um, you have white areas here that you can see that will print. It'll print the green background, but not in this area here. You can do the same thing for a background pattern. If you pull up your color palette again, go to fill, find a palette or find a color palette pattern. Oh my goodness, I can't talk today. So you can see I'm just selecting randomly. Buffalo plaid. It's pretty trendy right now. You've got your stripes. Um, so you can see how you have some different options here. Ooh, that stripe, that's kind of ugly. We're going to change that. I like that buffalo plaid a little bit better. But you get the idea here. All right. So at this point, if I'm ready to print this, then I will go over to File, Print. I can use the printer icon right here because what you're doing is you're, print, you're sending it to the printer that's um, hooked up to your computer and has really nothing to do with the software itself. Um, once you've printed it, then honestly, it'll be a lot easier to hand trim this because of the straight lines. You'd probably spend more time putting it on the mat, sending it to the cutter, taking it off the mat and all that. 
than if you just trimmed by hand or with a paper cutter. Um, I feel like I've ramb rambled a little bit, but I've shown you a lot of tool options here for designing, building a template that you could potentially reuse again and again, um, filling a rectangle or a shape with a picture or a pattern. Um, we also did color fills, we changed the lines, we replicated, we um, aligned. So lots of stuff covered in this. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a question below um, in the comments. And I hope you found this helpful, guys. Have a great day.